Hi everyone. So for the first time in what seems like forever, we come to you, those disembodied voices in your ear, in a rare moment where we can talk without conditionality surrounding the midweek game. Because the dust has finally settled on a complete game week as we record. Hooray! Nonetheless, ex exciting times abound with all kinds of manoeuvrings being made by managers as they plan for the upcoming unicorn that is a blank slash double game week now in front of us, which of course we got onto this week. First though, Lucy's back fighting fit and we're joined by a guest today, Gian Batra. It's a great name for a wrestler, Gian. You know, just flows off the tongue. <laughs> on his way to Thanks. the ring, Gian Batra! And... <laughs> And you can find Jan on the Bird app at FPL underscore Jan Batra. That's J-I-A-N-B-A-T-R-A. Welcome, Jan. A small intro, if you wouldn't mind, for those who don't know you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on. Um, so yeah, like Tom said, I'm FPL underscore Jan Batra. I produce content on Twitter and for Fantasy Football Hub. And I also host their spaces for an hour pre-deadline. If anyone wants to come along to those, we've had some pretty cool guests on there. So yeah. Excellent. Cool. Nice to have you on. Thank you. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Uh, we won't mention Chelsea fans Southampton too much because I know yeah, that's, that's cool. a bit of a sore point. Uh, but <laughs> looking forward to chatting more um, we are Who Got The Assist you can find Tom on the main account at WGTA underscore FBL and you can find me Lucy at Lucy Hynett with two T's on the pod today we'll focus on Liverpool and the impact their disappearance has had on the FPL season so far with the double slash blank game week 25 upon us we'll then move on to how we might approach Liverpool's reappearance on the FPL radar and this will also feature further discussion on next week as Tom contemplates his free hit strategy. We're recording on the evening of the 20th of February ahead of the Champions League fixtures, but crucially not in the middle of a game week. Woohoo! Excellent, excellent. Right, let's see how we did this week. Just gone. Now it's complete. We can finally talk about it. Jan, let's start with you. I mean, how how's your season going? And then lead us into, if you, would, if you wouldn't mind, kind of how this week went. Yeah, of course. So the season has been chaotic. It's not really been smooth sailing at all until recently. Um, prior to the World Cup, I was at 1.2 million, which if we're being honest for a content creator is pretty awful. Like not to beat around the bush, but it is. Um, and then from the World Cup, it picked up really nicely. So it took me about five game weeks to go from 1.2 million to 100K. Um, and now Very I'm in nice. the top 100K. Wow. So like I'm... Um, I'm back in like with, with the big boys and it's nice. That's quite an ascent. That really is quite yeah. I think mainly it was um not going Cancelo and going for the Kane structure and having Shaw from the start from the World Cup. Oh, so good having this. Basically good not doing all the things I did. <laughs> and then in terms of this week, um this week I, I know everyone, most people had a pretty mundane week and as did I, but I actually felt like it was a real opportunity missed. I think after, because I own Martinelli and Odegaard, after what they did against Villa, were Kepa, Tony, De Bruyne, and Buena all to blank, considering at 3.45, it was all looking pretty good. It was, a, it was a little bit disappointing, but look, like a pretty mundane week, a very, very small red arrow, but I'm quite well set for, for the coming week, so I'm looking forward to it. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, Lucy, what about yourself? Uh, yeah, another mediocre week for me. Uh, 51 points, took another red arrow, so that's four in five game weeks. Um, fortunately, the one green hour I did get in that period was good. So I'm now at 90k. Um, but yeah, I can't really string together any green arrows, which is a bit depressing. Um, I agonised about who to bench between Ake, White and Nonto. And as it turns out, all three of them got one point. So it was all pretty irrelevant. Um, the lack of Bruno Fernandes really burnt this week, especially with KDB dodging all of the points. Um, there were several opportunities where I was convinced he'd get an assist and he didn't get mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the investment in City over the last few weeks hasn't really paid off, if I'm honest. And then by the time Spurs played, I needed Kane to go massive and he didn't. So, yeah, 51's not great. Hmm, okay. Well, I had a great time on Saturday. FPL meets with the gang. Uh, FPL meets if you want to attend the next one. Jubbly won the uh, final day of the season in May. I'll come back to why I mentioned that in a second, apart from to give them a shout out because they're lovely people. But I ended up this game week on a nice 63. Um, mainly That's solid. I did the opposite of Lucy and I held Bruno last week. And um, so last week, KDB obviously pulled my trousers down. And this week, I, Bruno pulled down KDB on his trousers, which is very nice. So two assists, three bonus for the 12 points. And that diluted the losses of Rashford's EO 
uh, being over 100 to get his 15 very nicely. Uh, elsewhere, you know, the usual stuff, Odegaard assist and free bonus is very useful. Um, Haaland was the captain uh, who blanked, obviously. And I bought in uh, Badia Shile as part of my onward planning for Robertson. So uh, a bit galaxy brain, but obviously I'm free hitting this week. And I'll explain later uh, what that kind of plan looks like. But I played him and Trippier over my my guy, Estepinian, who unfortunately got eight oh. points um, on the bench because he was subbed in the 62nd minute. So he bumped up to two bonus when uh, the Brighton clean sheet was an injury? Was. Did I hear that correctly? I don't, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether it was, it was tactical. I think it might have been tactical. I, I'm no. not 100% sure. But like when I watched the highlights, I noticed they did have an extra attacker when he went off. So it might have been tactical. Yeah, maybe. So, I mean, uh, obviously I played Trippier because I was out watching the game and I wanted some skin in the game and I was saying to I think it was my friend Jack on the day that if if I wasn't there I'd play this opinion so another you know eight points down or whatever it is but you know can't complain obviously a smallish setback last week because I only had all them from City and um, but back in the top 20k again 70.5k so a very decent 33% upward swing this week and my free hit is now active which is always very nice indeed right uh, mini league we can actually do that as well which is quite nice Top 10 this week, a beast from the East, 10th for Ashe Kunde. Uh, he got 52 points only this week, so quite a mediocre set of scores, shockingly in Min League in the top 10. He's down from 7th. In 9th is Saka Potatoes, Alex Terry, 63 points for him this week. In 8th, up from 16th, is Josiah Very Dazedian, the Eternal Flame, 63 points for him. In 7th, now from 6th, uh, Lee Ebersberger, Miggy Smalls, 52 in sixth down from fifth, very, very small movements due to kind of quite uh, dampened scores. What would Jesus do? Rob Brooks in fourth down, in fifth down from fourth, it's Chris Hughes Villains. In fourth, all the way up from 13th, Andy Nichols, Captain Jack Sparrows, Captain Rashford this week, the sole captain of Rashford in the top 10. Obviously got him a long way of a big 76 this week. And the top three said as they were Daniel Strand in third, Victor Sunday in second, and Mark Bleakley in first, the semi enders. Mark's got a 37 point lead and everybody else, and he's 45th in the world. So, very, very nice work indeed, Mark. And finally, the market forces this week. Unsurprisingly, in terms of the sales, Nick Pope, uh, after what, what is uh, people are saying, oh, you know, he should, doesn't deserve to miss the final, et cetera, et cetera. But the guy knew the, what the next game was. And that was a, quite a silly thing to do. Right? I don't think he meant it. I was having I, this I, debate I, with a couple of people. I don't think he meant it because I think when he goes to ground, right, his um, intention is kind of just to clear. You know those like diving mm, headers, which maybe. where you clear it really low. And I think he's just kind of really badly judged it. And in a split instinct, he just like, oh, stuck a hand up. Maybe I'm not in sure. yeah, that's, that's what kills him is the fact that his instinct kicks in after he falls over and he's like, oh, I got the ball. Oh, no, that's not what I'm meant to do out here. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I don't maybe. think he was particularly conscious, which is unfortunate for him. Maybe but, I'm being, I'm being I mean, we get to see Loris Carrius. get to see Carrius. Who has a great record in finals, right? Yeah, but against United, it's a nice storyline. Okay. <laughs> Redemption songs. Um, yes, yeah, so Pope Trippier also been sold. Uh, almost 200,000 sales of Trippier as well. Almiron completes the top three of transfers out to people shedding the Newcastle assets. 180,000 sales for him. Elsewhere, Ivan Tony, 175,000 sales for him. And Marcus Rashford, owners have seen enough. 160,000 people have gotten rid of Marcus Rashford this week. In terms of transfers in, a name I wasn't expecting when I looked at the transfers in is Cody Bloody Gakpo. And 225,000 transfers in for Gakpo this week. He's followed by. I know, it is a lot, and we'll speak about him later. Um, he's followed by his more expensive teammate, Mo Salah, 177,000 transfers in for him. Similar to uh, Bukayo Saka, 170,000 for uh, our star boy. Elsewhere, it's you know, Alexander Arnold, 166,000. And Allison, 148,000. So loads of people selling Pope and buying the big Brazilian at Liverpool. Let's move on to the main topic, which is, well, you can see it in the fact that people are buying Liverpool players. Just Liverpool. You know, the, f the first bit we'll talk about really on this pod is the, is the kind of a disappearance of Liverpool and the impact it's had in the season thus far. And then the second half of the break, you know, look at the tactical stuff. So the, their reappearance at blank game week, who do we buy, who are we interested in, and kind of wider ephemera around that double game week as well. But first, I think let's talk about what's happened to them this year a little bit. How would you, starting with you, Jan, characterise Liverpool assets over the last you know, three to four years in an FPL sense? Uh, last three to four years, I'd say top, top tier. You look at the likes of Trent when he emerged, and even like once he emerged, he was still at quite a respectable price point where considering how much you were paying for him, you were getting a serious premium on your points. 
which is fantastic. You've had Salah, who's basically just been an auto pick and an auto captain for like since he's been there, basically. Um, and then it's not just been them two, even though those have been the best two. You've had Marnie at times where he's been explosive, such a good player. You've had Robertson at times, you've had Van Dyke at times, and maybe you could kind of mix it up and go for like one of their midfielders at, at very certain points. But overall, like at least having a double up has been very profitable for, for owners over the last three to four years. Yeah, they're just mainstays, aren't they, Lucy? Like they're the first names on the team sheet for so long was Salah and Trent. I mean, you, you, you and I must have started with them pretty much every year since we can remember, right? Yeah, I mean, I started with Triple Liverpool this year. I had I checked it. I had Salah and Trent and Diaz, and I was like, yeah, that's obvious. Everyone's got three of those guys. Um, I think it's five consecutive years in the two hundred club for Salah. I mean, that's how ridiculously consistent he is. Um. Trent had a couple of years in there. Mane, as you just said, had a couple of years in there. I think that's another thing is that we assumed that one of these attackers would take up his mantle in a sense and fill in that gap and give us another attacker that might be worth owning as well. So that's been kind of another shock to the system that there hasn't been another way to get into a very profitable attack. Um, but yeah, they've been the obvious picks season after season. And to be in a position now where we're, well, most of us probably don't own any of them and maybe one um, is, is pretty crazy. Yeah, these are guys we'd have considered basically untouchables in the past. Like, there was no way we considered selling them any given week. And they, in many ways, were the antidote to Pep's chaos at City because you could hold them and pretty much be confident you'd have starters every week. Whereas with City, I mean, admittedly, you know, Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne are probably okay, which have one of Laporte, Diaz, Stones was hanging around. But Liverpool, you know, you bought them in game week one and the phrase season keepers, you don't hear that so much anymore these days. But back then, it really was the case for those two. In terms of the drop-off itself, what's really fascinating is look at, looking at the FPL data and just seeing where they are at the moment. So this season, Liverpool as a team have scored 994 points. Sounds like a lot, and I know that we've missed the game week, so it's all sort of relative. But that puts them at ninth in terms of FPL points scored by teams. They're below ninth. the likes of, yeah, ninth. So they're below the likes of Fulham, Brentford and Brighton. To put that in perspective, last year at game week 24, admittedly there was an extra game week, they were second. So only below, only City were ahead of them. Three years ago, uh, so two years ago, that was the year that they wobbled a bit. So around now, they were eighth below the likes of West Ham, Leicester and Villa. There was a late sort of comeback, if you remember, where they came third. Yeah, top year four, after, yeah. Yep, year before that, first. Year before that, first. So having that drop-off has been huge. And using Salah as a barometer of how players have dropped off as well, even in that year where they were third, where they were eighth overall at this point, so 2020 and 21, back then he was second in the rankings. Um, in fact, he's been first pretty much all the time, except for that year he was second. I think it was just Bruno ahead of him that year. Right now, Salah's ninth. He's got 122 points, so he's kind of 59 points off where he was this point last year, albeit, yes, the game perhaps lost. Almiron and his level with Tony, basically. So that sort of player. And the same thing can be seen with Trent, uh, for who, for example, is currently outside the top 10 scorers for defenders. He's outscored by his goalkeeper, Allison. And luminaries such as Tim Ream and Eric Dyer have more points. Tim Ream's been having a serious season from, from a <laughs> fantasy perspective and a real life perspective. I know, but you, you still got you still got to just use that name uh, as as just one of those to wheel out, just yeah, to show how far Trent has fallen. It's unprecedented, isn't it? And I guess in the, in the league and in in kind of the proper football as well, Lucy, we see this happening too. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, if you look at the league table, for example. Um, Liverpool got 92 points last season, scoring 94 goals and conceding 26. They've already conceded more than that this season after 22 games. And at the current rate, they're looking at like 60 points if they got the same points per game as they're getting now. So you'd be lucky to get top six with that kind of form. It could easily only be top eight. So it's happening in the real world as well as in the FBL world. Um, I think it's probably worth noting from a kind of stats perspective um Salah isn't just down on where you might expect him to be from a kind of xgi point of view so his xgi per 90 is 0.67 versus 0.91 last season he's also underperforming that expected data so he's only got eight goals from an expected 10 ish so he's not doing that well from that perspective and then you've also got the added combination that they still don't seem to have got any penalties in the premier league <laughs> which is a bizarre statistical um, turn up. So, yeah, another reason Salah has always been so popular is that he's on penalties and is generally fairly good at them. 
he hasn't had any of those to take. So that again has dented his appeal further. So I think there are lots of reasons why um, Liverpool aren't doing so well. I think their central midfield has been a massive part of that. Um, constant kind of churn of injuries, aging players, people struggling to make kind of basic runs. Um, so I think, yeah, the central midfield, which is probably the area which is affecting both attack and defence, doesn't have a direct impact on us as FPL players in terms of not wanting to own any of those central midfielders, but it has kind of a, a run on impact as well. Um, what do you think, Jan? What What's your kind of take on them? Yeah, so I've got a few takes on Liverpool. Um, I'll start with their performances like in real life as such. And I think the main component and reason for their downfall was not actually the midfield, but the loss of Mane. Um, I think he's such a good player and brings so much to the team in so many different aspects, whether it's his pressing from the front, his defensive work rates, how what he offers you tactically. Um, and I don't think that's replaceable. I, like, I just don't think you can find someone in the world who's as good as him. You can maybe find a, a similar profile, but no one as good as him. For example, Diaz is quite a good comparison, whereas he has a X amount of similar traits, but he's just not quite as good. And obviously he's been injured. Um, and I think that kind of substantiated into the midfield. Um, because when you play a midfielder, for example, Fabinho, Henderson, Thiago, it lacks the legs. Um, and Mane always provided you that just in case you needed to, to cover. So I think that's one point. Um, then going on to the midfield, I think the Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson, that's what I didn't like about it. It kind of lacked the legs. Um, and I've liked since Bajatic came in, I've, I've talked about before the Everton game, how I quite like the balance because Henderson actually can do a lot of the attacking work. That kind of goes unnoticed, but I think he's good at it. So I like that. Um, and so I, honestly, I don't think the defense is the problem. I think more so the system and, and the the lack of pressing from the front in comparison to previous seasons is what exposed it more so than anything. Nice. Yeah, no, good. I think it's good to have like a nice balance of both the FPL data, the league table, and some semblance of, you know, a, from you both, a, an eye test and systems analysis. So let's. I will play... say though, I'm exec- I'm expecting somewhat of a resurgence, and if Salah has the most midfield points by the end of the season, I really won't be surprised. Hmm. All right, ah, we'll come. We'll come, we'll come, come back to that in the second half. <laughs> okay, stick, cool. stick, sticking with the Liverpool downturn, if, not because I enjoy it. I actually don't mind Liverpool. I hate Chelsea. I really I don't, I don't <laughs> mind Liverpool. Chelsea. God, no one likes Chelsea. But but anyway, um, I, I think the, uh, the a good thing to kind of move on to here actually is an old school sort of correspondence thing I had. Um, so I had a good question through DM from FPL Arthur, which links quite nicely to this sort of question. Um, he basically said, I'm starting to feel like the prices are simply too low in FPL. The last two seasons have felt like, you know, there's very few instances of being priced out of moves and managers have loads of cash in the bank by having two or three premium assets. He says, in his opinion, it's harder to get all the players. You, it should be harder to get all the players you really want. And be, you should be forced to find more diamonds in the in the rough and make more sacrifices. If you look back at the FPL teams of yesteryear, he says, they were made up of strange players due to the harsher pricing. So he wants to want, he's wondering kind of what had happened over this, this year, previous years, to make that sort of happen. I think that nicely leads into Liverpool, because although the question is mostly about pricing, I think we can link, link in Liverpool here very nicely, because of the fact that their disappearance from the game has had a huge impact and it's created this sort of perception that you can fit all your players in. You can do this, you can do that. And the removal, I suppose, of Salah and Trent from the overall zeitgeist has been massive, especially Trent, I think. So if you think about his absence from our lives, you could have been rolling, for example, since World Cup wildcard, the back three of Shaw, Trippier and Botman. Shaw is five million. Just the most basically what I did. Yeah, exactly. That's why you've done really well. And then Trent is 7.5. So that's 2.5 million you've got hanging around. Add to that, Cancelo not being in the game anymore. So another big premium defender. You've got another 2 million. So you've got 4.5 million hanging around. And I, I think that that's had like huge impacts and the ability to just buy whoever the hell you want. What do you think, Lucy? Do you think that's kind of the main thing? Do you think that maybe no Salah FOMO as well has, that has an impact? I think Liverpool is an example of where we've kind of got unexpected opportunity, I suppose, not not having them having more cash available. I think there are some areas where there was quite clearly a problem with the way FPL are priced things. So I think it was quite clear from the beginning that even if Arsenal hadn't, you know, given us a title charge, they were offering pretty tre- tremendous value. That was why, for example, Jesus was so widely owned at the beginning of the game was because they'd clearly made some errors with with. Um, pricing those guys up I think in hindsight although none of us would have called it 
significantly. Rashford, they've underpriced quite badly. I think six and a half was going too far, even if he hadn't been quite yeah. so explosive. Um, seven and a half, eight, eight would have been more, much more reasonable, I think. I, I think he was the biggest drop. He, they dropped him by three million. That was more than any other yeah. player. Yeah. And I think you and I at the time, Tom, said that seems like a big one. That seems like someone we'll have, we'll have back. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, Absolutely. no one thought he'd do what he did. But, you know, I think there are, there are a few cases where you can say that FPL got it wrong and that has compounded the fact that you don't have these Liverpool players in, in place. Yeah, what do you think, Jan? Yeah, so I actually love Arthur's comment and I totally agree with it. I think it'd be great if we could have maybe two premiums and then every, like not every week, but you had to go and find like a 5 million player for your team, like two in two spots from like a mid-table side. Um, I was going to say Southampton, but the relegation. And then, um, <laughs> sorry, I had to. And then um, kind of just force everyone to be so different. There's quite kind of why I, I really like the game at the moment. If you look at the teams, they're not actually that similar anymore. There's a lot of like three, four, five, six players difference. Um, and I think it'd be just make the game, it'd make the game a lot harder, which I think would improve the level of content and the variety of it. So I think it'd be a win all around. So I, think- I quite like that. I, I think, think given that you've just had my little Southampton dig, I'll have to return <laughs> the Chelsea yeah. dig yeah. and say, for example, Reese James is another player we all, well, the majority yeah. of us would have loved. Um, hasn't stayed fit. Chelsea haven't been very reliable defensively. There have been other Chelsea players that people have been kind of had a passing interest in, Mount, for mm. example. And again, they aren't providing value. So again, that's another 100%. area where we're probably ignoring them as well. So it's... Yeah, 100%. 100%. Reese is a really interesting one because I think I personally think like they, Chelsea should give him a longer time on the sidelines so that he can fully recover, and that's why I probably won't buy him until I see that like he can play like ninety minutes three games in a row. Yeah, I've it. been burnt too many times on that one. Yeah, I definitely need to see it. I mean, it's de- it's really interesting, and also you've got even without players being considered, I mean, Salah's been fit all year, right? But that FOMO is just completely gone. It's kind of also yeah. there's there's one less lock space in your team. And that's enabled lots of fun things like, you know, premium ping pong, which which we'd never have dreamt of doing that last few years. But moving, I don't know, from Bruno to KDB for that double last week to to Salah for this upcoming one. I mean, using these guys as disposable rather than permanent products, as it were, has really opened up multiple avenues to kind of change the game. But as as you both have kind of touched on, it's made our teams really top six heavy in loads of ways and Arthur kind of mentions that as well because players like Matoma for example have only recently come to the fore but post World Cup wildcard my entire team was stacked with top six players alone and that's yeah, pretty really much so. really rare it doesn't happen that often but I mean let's not forget at the start of the season people were saying FPL had screwed up by pricing Trent at 7.5 people were saying that's so cheap like, what have you done it's too easy uh, came the house and remember that time lucy when we were kind of you know looking for moves to make each week so we didn't really know what we were you know it was yeah just... we didn't know we couldn't decide what you could possibly do with your transfers yeah i know i know and, and now we're in a situation where because kind of the dice have fallen in a certain way we were in one of those years you do get this every now and again it's a bit of a strange one but during the leicester year i'm probably too too old for you Jeff. but no the... i mean like i yeah. played it sort, sort yeah of. mares was 5.5 vardy was six so you could fit those two in. They were the two top scoring players of the year, I think. Kane at 9.5. And that was his first year properly, I think, in number nine mantle when he was brought up from 5.0 to 9.5. Then you had Eriks and Ali. And you could kind of fit all of these players into a lovely smush. And you know, pricing was irrelevant. So we do get weird, weird, weird years like this. But I mean, do you think FPL were have designed it i suppose that people can choose their favorites or do you think they've just got kind of gotten a bit unlucky with the likes of liverpool and chelsea as, as lucy has mentioned jan are going a bit um off piece i suppose yeah so probably a bit of both this year because i think this year is the first year in a while where we've had a slightly unorthodox premier league season in terms of like the heavy hitters so for example the last few years we've just had like a title race between the best two teams and they've been the best two teams by miles right so it's kind of fair enough and everything else sort of evens out. Whereas this year, you've got Brentford, Brighton and Fulham all in the top eight, I believe, which is incredible, right? You've got Liverpool and Chelsea down in like ninth and 10th. 
Um, so I think it kind of opens up the avenue of, of a bit of chaos. I think at the start, assuming that like no one thought any of this would happen, that Arsenal would be winning the league, um, then I think it was maybe slightly monotone and it was a little bit risky. And it kind of was catering towards the the more casual players or the players who just want to pick their favourite players. But I think they were somewhat fortunate with how the season panned out. So I think it's quite good how it's gone now. What do you reckon, Lucy? Anything to add? I th- I think probably they haven't been lucky. I don't think we should be in a position where we can all afford these players. Like I feel like they screwed up, but maybe I'm just being less generous. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> I think they definitely at the start of the year, with what we knew then, we were saying, hey, you know, you, you can fit in all of these players and it's absolutely fine. So I think there was definitely even though it's not kind of panned out exactly the way we thought of the start of the season would pan out. When does it ever, I suppose, to, to a greater or lesser extent? I think this is like... I think real, it has been a bit more extreme, hasn't this it? This is a real swing, yeah. isn't it, towards a, a really into the unexpected. But it has led to a really strange situation where, you know, it's all about value. And I, I don't think... I, mean, I may be wrong in the future, and maybe Jan's a, a strange prediction at this point in time, but it could be, um, you know, a soothsayer prediction that Salah is going to be a must own and could come to pass. And, and suddenly, you know, it'll be all about team value again. But you know, all of the things that we normally do every season, you know, farm that team value really early on, really give a crap about, you know, watching the the markets and things like that, and and people pulling out these really, really like powerful teams at the end of the season, like. It doesn't feel at the moment because of where we are and the teams who are currently within the zeitgeist that that's going to be a big problem. But hey, you know, Arsenal have got a tough run, a really tough run in. So maybe then things will start to turn around and people kind of go, hey, maybe I don't want Odegaard and Saka. Great players, but maybe I, I'm a fixture head and I just want the fixtures to be in. So yeah, I mean, it remains to be seen. The only other thing I would just quickly pick up on here, I don't, I don't want to hate on the analytics crew too much or analytics and models in general, but I think this year there's definitely been an element of models, predictions, which are kind of based on priors, which are that Liverpool are very good, have struggled. Um, and it's you, you can definitely see, I don't know if anyone uses FPL review here, but those recommendations, Lucy, have been quite difficult to kind of get your head around sometimes and you, have you found yourself sort of ignoring them or at least taking them with a pinch of salt and why do you think that's been t- tough especially for this year for people of that particular bent well i think it's always a problem isn't it for statistical models because you need a sig- statistically significant data set so you need a long range of time and then if a, if a team goes through a period of quite quick decline as we've seen with liverpool it's very difficult for that to shift to keep track and also maintain the integrity of the data it's using so i do have kind of sympathy or understanding of why it's happening but i do agree that i have had to look at fpl review several times and go no i'm i'm not going to sell my soul for trent no i'm not going to sell four players to bring salah in like we need to calm down (laughs) um so i think that's been something i've been very aware of the tricky thing for me now, I think, will be changing gear to recognise that Liverpool do have a good double game week. There is definite validity in owning them. I'm struggling at the moment to kind of gauge how far you go with them. Um, I think that's what I'm struggling with the most. Where, where are you with them, Jan? Yeah, so if I just pull up the fixtures, that's what I was just doing. I think they're pretty good. Like You've got, you've got uh, Palace away and Wolves at home this week, which I like as a double game week. I think I was impressed by um, Palace at Brentford, but I think it was more of a Brentford off day than it was a Palace on day, if that makes sense. Um, and then you've got, after that, you've got United at home, which I don't actually think is too bad. The reason being, yeah, they kept a clean sheet against Leicester, but against both Barcelona and Leicester, they easily could have conceded a few more than they did. Um, if it was for better finishing, De Gea made a few good saves. And then after you've got Bournemouth away and Fulham at 28, if that game goes ahead. Um, and especially that Bournemouth picture, I, I like it. And with a double, I'm I'm quite optimistic about Salah's chances. I think that right side's really coming into into its own again with uh, Trent. I like his role going back to what it used to be. Um, I think it's slowly transitioning there. So I'm quite confident in them. So I think that there's been an upswing, um, but we have kind of seen a, a particular sort of impact of their disappearance. Right, we begin to get in the second section, so I'll bring it all together now just quickly to, to kind of conclude this bit. Yes, uh, the way Liverpool have disappeared this year has impacted their pro a lot, I guess I think we've said. 
some due to some in some way how things have been priced. Uh, Arsenal have been priced very kindly, for example. Rashford, as we've all said, was uh, very, very cheap. And it's kind of made pricing structure irrelevant. Is that FPL's fault? Is it unlucky? Either way, it's changed things a lot. But the reappearance of Liverpool could well change things, especially if the likes of Mo Salah and Trent, who we're going to talk about in just a minute, begin to be back at a central status after this blank double game week. All right, let's take a break there, and we'll come back to the reappearance of Liverpool just after this. So we're back, and after diagnosing, I guess, the impacts of the disappearance of Liverpool and FPL, hey, presto, they've reappeared on the horizon as a result of that mythical blank slash double game week on the horizon. Palace and Wolves this week, which is very interesting indeed for a lot of managers. And of course, we're already seeing people make moves, as mentioned, in the transfer market. Lots of questions this week on Liverpool assets, and we'll get into those in just a bit. I just want like a, obviously I'm on my free hits, so it's a little bit different for me. But outline for you guys, how do you feel about them? Are you all in on them or quite cautious? Uh, Lucy, I think you, you were kind of obviously sounding the note of caution earlier on. Uh, I mean, are you looking at maybe one, maybe two? You know, where are you with them right now ahead of this uh, blank slash double? Um, I'm very torn, as I said. I, I'm i definitely in on Salah. I think he's a really good captaincy candidate. And obviously I have KDB, so it's an obvious switch. Um, The rest of it I'm really struggling with. I think defensively those are quite good fixtures so i am thinking maybe trent and i also have this burning feeling that darwin nunez if fit could do quite well so i'm definitely on one and i could be on as many as three but i just i'm really struggling to gauge gauge that right now is that a minus are you taking a hit to get there yeah, you got two, that would be got, a minus you've got, four yeah. yeah you've got two you've got two for a chance like it like i've got two yeah. yeah okay excellent so could be kind of straddling all in and caution very nicely. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. I see. And uh, Jan, you're a lot more bullish about them, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm definitely getting a double up. Um, whether I will get a triple up is kind of just how risky I want to play it. Um, I'll definitely get Salah for De Bruyne. And then I'm very, very likely to sell Trippier for Robertson or Van Dyke. Um, which one I haven't decided yet. Right. Chimacast is in the back of my mind if he gets an appearance, but when Van Dyke's fit, he's never bent. So that's something in my mind. And then the other one, I, I want Trent. Trent, I think, is an amazing asset this week. I just I just have no route to him. Mm. Um unfortunately. Did you have money in the bank then for the trip here to the Yeah, yeah. So I've got just enough for the Salah to like De Bruyne to Salah and Trippier to, to Robbo. I'm point one off going short to Van Dyke, which I might do if there's a price drop, but there won't be. Um, and then in terms of the other one, if I want Nunes, I can get him. Um, I can just sell Kane, but I I don't think as much and as much as I'm a huge Darwin Nunes fan, like a massive, like massive Darwin Nunes fan. I think he's got unbelievable potential, but I I think I'll fade him for now. Just because I think he plays like maybe like 70, 70 or 90, 70, and it's just that extra 20 minutes that probably puts me off. Oh, it's that shoulder injury which we'll come on to in just a second. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit different from you guys, but I'm I, I'm very happy to be renting them uh, on the free hit. Um, but I'm still wary of double game week fever. I'm still wary of what we've seen with Liverpool, um, and you know the fact that against Newcastle, to be honest, the XGC guys <laughs> make me laugh, and um, that they didn't look particularly fantastic. To be honest, the result it looked beyond the result and the actual game itself. Wow, I mean they they weren't a team that I suddenly was thinking, yeah, you know, I really want to be in on these and own these players and. I don't want, I wouldn't, it wouldn't want if I wasn't on a free hit to be selling my United players at the moment. Um, and obviously that's why I kind of, partly why I free hitted. But, you know, I, I want Shaw and I want Bruno to probably stay in my team, but definitely Bruno to stay in my team. So, yeah, but on, on free hit, obviously I can lean in. It's just like sort of cautious face I'd be presented. My new found, my new born caution, Lucy. Um, I, I think that I'd be in my situation if, if I was kind of, you know, playing it through this week, I'd probably be looking at Salah and either Ken Robertson, of course. I'd, I'd have gone with those two. Um, but there is, if you obviously, if you do transfer in Liverpool players, there's a, a heavy sort of dose of the luck factor attached to them. So, Brent yeah. Krelling gives 38% chance of a game week 28, which I believe happens if Leeds beat, is it Leeds beat Fulham or Fulham beat Leeds? One of the two. If Leeds beat Fulham and Leeds are away, I think. Yeah, I, I thought that was. And I don't think they're going to win. Um, and uh, I mean, Fulham have played their beating in the cup a lot, um, so it, it may well happen. Um, and it's 
you know, a tricky game with United after this, and there's that Bournemouth game and the potential Fulham game for 28. So it's all sort of you know, up in the air. There's heavy sort of variance attached to it. Um, I probably need to mention why I've pre hit it if people don't follow me on Twitter or don't aren't on Twitter. Um, the, the first thing to say is obviously it's very highly team specific. Like what I felt looked good for me, maybe we wouldn't look good for you. And I know we're told to wait, etc. We don't have all the information, but I felt the opposite of that. Um, is that the only info we're going to get this week? Um, and next is what games get added to game week twenty eight. Um, game week thirty two is another one. People have said, "Oh, what about this?" Um, but it feels a bit too far ahead for me to be worrying about. I know that sounds really naive, and it could be naive to some ears. But equally, giving up what I perceive to be gains right now due to worrying about a game week seven game weeks away didn't seem didn't sit right with me. Put it that way. So I did have enough to get to a rather meh ten this week, but it wasn't good enough for me, especially as I felt like ultimately pre hitting into a double made more sense than pre-hitting into a single. And there's loads of players in my team that I didn't really want to get rid of. So Bruno, um, who has been presenting fantastic underlying data, if he'd scored um, against Leeds, for example, um, people would probably have kept him this week, et cetera, et cetera. Matoma, Estepinian, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so on. So yeah, I'm going to basically go for it with the free hit this week. Well, obviously I'm, I'm active. Rent some Liverpool players and try to get lucky in the pet lottery as well. And plus the Arsenal players are still there, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it kind of just means that suddenly here I am looking at a team that I'm not entirely convinced by in Liverpool, but still they're kind of also the key to my salvation, which is very, very odd indeed. Anyway, can I ask you a couple of things about your free hit strategy? Of course you can. I like the fact that for those who are not on the uh, YouTube, Jan hasn't got a stand for his microphone, so he's <laughs> holding it up like a pundit. <laughs> it's like a pit side interviewer. So um, a couple of things. Uh, I'll start with how 28 ties into it. Um, yep. I know you talked about Fulham playing their B team, but I think given it's more of a progressive stage in the cup, I feel like they probably put out a stronger team. And yep. I think if they do, they'd, they'll beat Leeds, or at least we'll use that assumption for this argument. Um, so then in 28, do you think there's much strength in depth for most squads who are free hitting now, who won't be using the free hit to have I... a strong enough squad for 28? What I want is I want Liverpool to obviously not have a game. So yep. then you guys will have to free hit. If, yeah. you, if that doesn't happen, if we do get a game, then I can put together a good enough team, the same as you guys. And then what are you going to do? You're going to free hit in 32? Are you going to free hit in 29? Like, you know, these are all things that I'm kind of like, well, those opportunities I can kind of match. If it's 32 and the worst case scenario happens, which is, uh, I haven't got it off the top of my head, but there's loads of teams. I think it go down to being like four games, five games. If that does happen, that's probably the worst case scenario, but it's quite unlikely so use my free hit now on a double versus use my free hit as kind of a bum cover in a single. I'm playing progressive, I'm play, uh, aggressive, I'm playing the upside of my free hit rather than playing it in a cautious, turtle manner. And that's kind of what appealed to me about doing it, plus where my team was. It's really interesting because I've always been of the stance and still am that free hits are more useful in blank than double game weeks. I know obviously this is a combination that's why um, it's a blank and double. And I've yeah, got yeah, exactly. the, the And then um, what, another thing with this week, how confident are you? Because I was going to talk about this later on, on Twitter. How confident are you, Everton, actually get a clean sheet this week? Um, I probably will go with one Everton player. Like I think we've got questions on these guys later on. But right. I think with these, with these, it's always really important not to go mad just because there's a double. Like We've spoken a lot on the pod about getting blinded by these mini doubles all the time. Admittedly, probably we've both fallen prey to it. Like Lucy, the captain Mitro, I bought in Mitro, um, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, it's about kind of having a sense of balance about it and not being carried away by the stream of Twitter hysteria or social yeah. media hysteria. Um, so it, it really is about that. And if Everton, like, I'm not going to be, my fate for this week doesn't rest on Everton. Put it that way. I'll make yeah. sure it doesn't. He says, <laughs> and it went, I'll end up with Pickford and bloody Tarkovsky. <laughs> won't I? Who knows? Don't right. forget McNeil as well. Let's move on from that comment and uh, go sp speak about Liverpool players. Uh, so uh, we've got a few questions this week. Thanks for those. Uh, FPL Oakwell asks, "Are you worried about X Mins for Liverpool guys? Salah, Gakpo, Bobby, Jota, Darwin, all now fit? I think he wrote that before the Darwin shoulder knack. But hey, there you go. I think I think Darwin actually was in an open training session. I think yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. 
at least send that to me earlier. So um, maybe we'll have to see about that. Um, I think Klopp said there's a chance and we'll have to see how he deals with pain, which sounds incredibly like a pops of dominatrix. Um, anyway, um, Nathan Jacobson asks, could Liverpool double defence be the play instead this week? And Andy Penman asks, if, is Gakpo of interest because he's a direct swap for Mares for him instead of having to sell Kane? I mean, should we start with Salah? Um, I, th- I think that he's probably the easiest one to bring in, so I don't think this can last very long. In terms of the question uh, that Echo Oakwell asked, Jan, I, I don't think there's going to be any question about Salah's X minutes, is there? No, I think he'll be fine. Um, 90-90. I think in terms of his question, it's more so the other assets. Um, and I actually kind of agree with him. Uh, I know the th- I'm going to kind of tie it into the third question, if you don't mind, about Gakpo. Um, and I actually think that's a trap waiting to happen because I think one reason Gakko has done so well is the midfield of Henderson, Bajetic, Fabinho, which kind of allows him to drop in the lines and play a, play almost his type of role. It's not the same system as the Dutch one um, like at all, but it has similarities and like a few patterns of plays I've noticed. And I think that kind of helps him and he's quite used to it. But I don't see with how Firmino and Hotza both being there how he plays both games. I'd be really surprised. I think that's just a trap waiting to happen. Hmm. What do you think, Lucy? Um, I think people are kidding themselves a little bit on Gakpo. I think a lot of people, I mean, for us, it sounds quite easy to bring in. For people that have got, their, say, their money up front in Kane and they don't have an easy premium, perhaps have got Bruno, I'm seeing a lot of people basically saying, oh, I'm not getting Salah, I'm getting Gakpo instead. And that, to me, is basically a disaster waiting to happen i think people will convince themselves that they're covering salah with a player who as jeff just said isn't isn't necessarily gonna <laughs> what oh, so I'm, I'm just laughing at that so it's, it's, it's definitely we're gonna see the threads this week aren't we and people are saying oh yeah but you know, let's point to the last four weeks of data where gakpo uh has a similar goal involvement to the likes of harry kane martinelli and uh, madison to say that he's an amazing player but yeah carry on yeah yeah so i just feel like it's one of those ones where because you don't have a convenient fpl move you just make you convince yourself that he's something that he's not um i think he's fine if you're looking at him alongside Salah and say have someone you want to take a punt with that's that's fine and that I do agree that his minutes are a risk, but they're probably all right-ish, given that he's only 7.7. But I think people have got look, potentially unrealistic expectations about what he can deliver. Mm. I think, basically, if you look at it from a free-hit perspective, um, Salah and Trent would be the two that you that you would have. Yeah. Um, so yeah. nods around. And then probably, without the shoulder neck, Darwin would be the shoe in I don't think there's any other way of, of looking at it that way. And I was honestly looking forward to hopefully getting a splat from the Ukrainian ketchup bottle um, this week, uh, Uruguayan ketchup bottle this week. Um, I was like, but... Ukrainian? What? Yeah, 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 awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, That's not making the edit. Um, before his uh, expected minutes fell off a cliff uh, with Jota kind of coming back. Um, and I think that you know if he does feature versus Real Madrid, then I probably will go with him. I would, he would have been the captaincy conversation for me, honestly, if he didn't pick up a, a doubt. And I think he would be someone that I'd be interested in uh, just because of the explosivity uh, with him. But if you do get a day where it all goes his way, you could be looking at a double digit hole, no problem. Easy. But mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that now. And Darwin and Gakpo, I think, probably are the two at the moment who are kind of the number three, if that makes sense for me. I had considered Jota. That was that's a very good call. Um, he may again be of interest if Darwin isn't fit, and but he is rebuilding fitness. Um, but if you are free hitting, he's eight point eight. So he's a player who's certainly not going to be somebody single game weekers will buy. Um, so he might be a player that you would buy, thinking that you know upside it could go really well. But like, that's a really hefty gamble. Um, so I think that those are probably the two, and I I probably agree that Gakpo. If I wasn't renting Gakpo, Gakpo if I was buying him I think I'd need a lot more thought about that and I would potentially probably not do so in my situation, fine, if, if that's a purchase for you and you're going to be stuck with the guy for a little while, especially with all the players who are coming back to fitness now I'm not sure, I'm not sure about him at all And uh, Would not... you not Sorry. 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 Yeah, would you not rather, it was something the second question mentioned would you not rather if we're going to assume that he has expected minutes problems, which I think is quite a fair assumption. 
go for the likes of Robertson, given he has probably, he honestly probably has a higher ceiling than Gakpo. And you'll probably get two games out of him, whereas Gakpo, you'll probably get one. Problem is, I mean, I know that um, I, I don't think a world Shimikas will appear because Liverpool needs yeah. to win games. The issue is the defensive solidity isn't there. Um, 12, yeah, be- 12 best for SGC since the World Cup. Yeah. But that's hardly a ringing endorsement, is it? Yeah, um, I mean, you're relying on assists um, with Robertson. No, I own Robertson. I've owned Robertson every week apart from this week, right? So I don't know. I'm fully aware of what Robertson can do. And if it does turn out that I just can't decide what the hell is going on, then I probably would go to Robertson and just hope for the best. I mean, Palace and Wolves, it probably, you, you couldn't really ask for much of a kinder double if you are yeah, going exactly. to chance your arm with double defence. So it might be something I come back to, honestly. It's just like, I would. I, I did like Darwin. If not Darwin, then probably Gakpo. Um, but yeah. if I if I start to just think, oh, you know what, I don't like the X Men's here and the Champions League if it's a bit dodgy, then I'll just kind of default back to the safety net Robertson. But it definitely doesn't feel the way I'd sort of go. I mean, Lucy, going forward, so you will be owning kind of one, two, three Liverpool. I mean, is it some? Is is it kind of an element of you're buying them? by causality of there being a double game week. And how much do you actually believe in these guys for your team? I do think we are seeing improvement in terms of having Brad Shetich in, in midfield. And I, I do think they are on an upward trajectory. As much as Newcastle shot themselves in the foot at the weekend, there were positive signs, although I do agree that they should have conceded. Um, but they, they generally, I, I am feeling a bit warmer on them anyway. Obviously, would I be considering them very seriously without the double? Probably not. But I'm now less averse to having to hold them for a bit longer, which is what where you'll be. The thing I don't like about the Liverpool defence, as much as I think that double game week is really well set up for defenders, is that it it kind of backs you into a bit of a horrible structure in terms of having so much money in defence. And we've kind of already covered that you don't really want the money there. Um, if you if you're not having Liverpool defenders, there isn't really anywhere to go. Given that Cancelo's out of the game, Reese James isn't consistently fit at the moment. It just feels a bit clunky. It just feels like you you'd end up trying to shift money forwards again, which might not be the the easiest way. Obviously, on a free hit, it's completely different. Um, but yeah, that's that puts me off a little bit there. And also, there's obviously the factor that even in games where they haven't conceded, arguably they should have. So yeah, I'm I'm. I I like one of their defenders, a Robertson or a Trent. I I don't know if I'm that warm on both. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know. What do you think after hearing that, Jan? I know you mentioned you know, Robertson and asked me about it. I mean, from hearing what we both said, I mean, where do you would you still be interested? Yeah. So for me, the pool, like I I personally am just like, I'm, in terms of Gakpo, I'm completely like against that pick. So for me, kind of narrows down the pool. I think Salah's a lock. Um, Trent's a lock. And then the third spot is, for me, Robertson or Darwin Nunes. Um, like I said, I really like Nunes's prospects, but the injury would kind of weigh on my mind given yeah. the tight schedule. Um, the reason I'd actually be quite... If I was on a free hit and like I didn't get Nunes, I'd snap up Robbo. And the only reason being, or even if I wasn't, I'd get that double defense, is if they get one clean sheet, it's, it's good enough for the week. They'll probably end up on eight points, just assuming no bonus and nothing else. Um, but also, with their attacking upside, they, either one of them could get a goal in a game where they concede or an assist. And I think the ceilings are there, so it kind of just takes yeah. a couple of good moments for them yeah. to, to really pay you back. And that's why I'm fine going with Trent and Robin. No, that's interesting. On a free hit, I definitely think it's it's a really strong case. No, yeah, that's really that's interesting. I, I think maybe if... So I'm sat on that gap at the moment just because obviously his price could rise and I could change my mind about him. But it is obviously Nunes is the one that I want. And I think it's really interesting yeah. to think about the kind of the hierarchy, I suppose, because... I did in my head, my head having have um, a Gakpo probably being second, but maybe you're right that I should think a bit more about Robertson and kind of you know, sort of the upside and you know, obviously having the double defence so could be a huge differential if it comes in uh, with a clean sheet and if if they do do well, if they win a slender one nil, you're looking at probably Trent with one with the bonus and also Robertson with bonus as well. So it's definitely something that I need to think about a bit more. But thanks, man. That was really useful. Um, anything else on Liverpool at the moment? I, I don't know what the prospects are going for. I suppose a lot of it is based on that twenty-eight potentially coming in because after that, you know, we're looking at wild cards, aren't we? And you know, all of those sorts of things kind of uh, coming through uh, after twenty-eight. But I, I do notice it in twenty-nine. 
it is uh, Man City, 30 is Arsenal. And then towards the end of the season, um, from game first one and 38, they don't play any other top six side, do they? So maybe at the end of the season, Jan, we, we may well see Liverpool really be part of a lot of sort of the, the meta, I suppose, going forward. Yeah, I think let, let's for this now, let's say maybe they get uh, 28. You could probably hold them because I don't think City especially is a bad fixture for, for really any attacking team. Um, they're susceptible to transition. They'll give you a chance. Edison makes a few too many mistakes for my liking. And especially like when you have a side with quality attackers, I think there's always a chance for, for a couple goals there. Um, Villa showed it quite well when Coutinho came on. They look really, really good. Um, and they're one of the best attacking sides in the league, in my opinion, at the moment. Um, mm. Given that like certain teams like Chelsea have been underperforming. So I think that City fixture is quite good. The Arsenal one's probably quite tough. That's probably the toughest of the lot. Um, but I, I don't mind it, to be honest. Yeah. So uh, you, there's a potential for there to be a long-term investment, especially yeah. if it does transpire that 29 is a free hit week. I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't really looked into a chip strategy too much because there's too much information to know. Right, so other questions about the week going forward. Now, we've probably established that Trent and Salah are the two you want um, after that Nunez um, and after that. You both think Gakpo's a trap? <laughs> and uh, yeah. Robertson's probably the way to go. Um, uh, Arsenal, I think we should give them a shorter shrift because, I mean, every content creator has been talking about which three Arsenal should you have for quite a while. I've got something on that. But it might still be worth mentioning very quickly just because I mean, I'm on the free hit, right? So Odegaard and Saka nailed. What's the third one? It's, it's not a Ramsdale, that's for sure, who I really detest only, uh, own, <laughs> owning. I don't know what's, what's going on with me and keepers, Lucy. I just wish you'd argue with me too, more about Kepa and convince me about owning Kepa at the start of the season. No, it's not been great uh, start of the, after the World Cup, World Cup, because obviously it's not been great the last couple of weeks, but a Ramsdale is so bloody annoying. <laughs> ah, dear. Anyway, um, yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. Uh, how are we feeling about them? At least you want to go first? Or no, you, you go. go okay. um, I'll throw a spanner in the works that I haven't seen many people do. I've kept a bit quiet until now, and I'll, I'll talk about it in the future. But I'm actually going to sell my triple arsenal, all of them, in game week 27. Um, so that's that's something I'm considering. Right. Uh, my reason is I'm like 99.99% sure I'm free hitting in 28. Uh, the plan is essentially to not dead end, but set the team in 27 so that it's good for 27 and 29. Um, and then it means I have literally like two players or three players for 28. So regardless, I free hit there. I'm strong in 29, and then I can wild card to deal with 32 or afterwards for 33. So that's kind of my route for Arsenal. So for me, they've only got like two weeks left. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I mean, I mean that's um, that's an interesting call. I, I'm not entirely sure if I'd agree with that. No, uh, fair. That's fair. I, I imagine most won't. I imagine. I, I think it's it's one of those where over the last few years, the the term "don't throw the baby at the bathwater" has been very high on my mind after spending countless chances on trying to get ahead of the template by removing players who are performing um, in the hope of reaching some sort of sunlit upland. My feeling is that it has to be a phased thing. Um, I remember you know, removing Son and Kane, for example, on the wild card uh, when they were both doing really well. I remember removing uh, Spurs players, um, Ali and Eric, I think, on the wild card a few years back. I remember removing like, Sanchez on the wild card a few years back. And it's all those things, all those experiences have taught me that it's probably best to yeah, not be too... Uh, cavalier about these things but hey no it could work you could find that Arsenal is fourth or fifth the thing is is that if we'd have lost against Villa then I think that I'd probably be beginning to agree with you that maybe we've choked or we've definitely kind of lost that impetus but it's a different Arsenal this year it really is without having to yeah, go no, too I, much and it, I, I think, totally I, agree I, I don't know I, I don't know whether I'd I don't know whether I'd Want, I don't know whether I'd have the minerals, frankly, to bet against us in, the, in, in, in real life and also in the fantasy football contest. Um, so, yeah, I totally you... agree with you in terms of like they're going to do really well. It's, uh, it's more so from my perspective, it's just quite team specific. Um, and that's about it. Otherwise, but I have like no coverage. But our, our, our players are so cheap, though. Like, they're so cheap. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, maybe you're jumping onto, onto doublers and stuff, but I mean, it's, it's full them away, which isn't. No, it's obviously not the most amazing pitch. They're doing well, but at the end of the day, I, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a big thing to hope for. 
Yeah, yeah, it's like Fulham away though. So for example, for me, I'll be selling Martinelli, White, and Odegaard. And if I'm selling Odegaard and White, the plan is to get McAllister and March. So it's like yeah. Fulham away twice yeah. for Ma- Max Martinelli Mike. and Odegaard. Or... Max Maximize double. I got you. Yeah, I got you. The problem is, the problem will be selling Odegaard, but Martinelli and White, I understand selling those, that's for sure. Um, but I think Odegaard and Saka are probably the two um, which have been you know, great. And yeah. it, this week, um, I suppose if you were wild carding or if you are trying to figure out your team or free hitting sorry and trying to figure out your team the third one's obviously of interest so uh, Nkessia probably would be the third one I'd be looking at probably looking at our defence at the moment it's been quite annoyingly leaky um, I mean I saw a few commentators online suggesting he needs a rest in Nkessia but it, it definitely feels like he's the one that I'd probably go with um, he doesn't seem like someone who needs a rest like he, he always seems so energetic and Fitness wise, pretty good. So I think he'll be fine there. I think maybe just maybe outside chance he gets dropped, but I'm I'm not too sure. I haven't been too keen on him to be fair. No, you got you got to watch our games, dude. Um, what do you think? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you think, Lucy, on this? Um, yeah, I, I'd be on Nketiah. I think he's been incredibly unlucky not to have returned more. Um, so on a free hit, I'd go Nketiah. I think um, when you come to to buying players now, I think we're probably getting to a period where I be getting a touch nervy about Jesus coming back, which would give them obviously ample opportunity to um, rest him in a few weeks time. So I'd, I'd definitely be free hitting with Nketiah. I don't know if I'd be buying into Nketiah at this point because I, I wonder how long a shelf life is. Um, that said, if I was going to sell them all in game week 27, maybe I'd be fine with Nketiah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, some some interesting ones to keep an eye on, that's for sure. Right, next question. Um, Alan asks if selling Trippier is worth it this week. I know Jan, you're doing this. Would the masses likely to stick with him going forward? Yeah, so I think it's kind, it's kind of forced. My hand's kind of forced. Like, I either have to sell him or Shaw. But if I do Shaw, then I can't get um, yeah, Robbo. Yeah, and yeah. one thing I, I, I actually prefer United's fixtures in 26, 20, 27, 20, yeah, 27 compared to Newcastle. So that's one of the reasons. And you're free hitting in 28. Okay, we're kind of in that territory now where it's kind of like, we're trying to remember exactly what you think you'd do. <laughs> what you'd I wish I had any idea what I was doing. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, so I think you'll be with me, Lucy, and probably keeping him, right? Yes. Um, although I would agree that this is a good time to get rid of him. Um, if you are open to that, then I think given that he's got blank and then City, that's that's a pretty good time to take the chance against him knowing that you'll work hard in the early 30s probably and bring him back again if you want to um so i think as much as i won't be getting rid of him because i don't really have a need to there's not really it's not like it, selling him brings me a move that i couldn't otherwise do so without that need it's not like a a risk that i'm inclined to take but i think if it's one of those things that kind of takes you to a new level in terms of what you can bring in then I, i'm fairly relaxed about losing him for a few weeks yeah i mean it's just because he's, he's got 28 that's the reason he's staying for me effectively um i mean if you're for example getting trent in and hoping for a small upswing um because you've got the double you've got the united game you've got bournemouth game versus uh, trippier blank and city away i mean i think on, on balance it probably does make sense i mean I, I, mm. i've done that and gone against what i think would be a blind spot for people by selling Almiron for Matoma this year, and that works out well for me. So it could be a time where, you know, if it, if it suits your team to do so, then fair enough, especially if you're free hitting in 28. I wouldn't, like you, RG, and I would not be particularly worried about that now. Um, yeah. Liverpool, uh, I think with Newcastle, when Gimarish is back, maybe you might be thinking again, oh, it's yeah. not actually yeah, that yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. It's a good point. Um, Lucy, I mean, are you free hitting in 28? Sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to cut you off. Probably. I, I'm not kind of like completely committed, but that's probably what I'll do, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Fair play. Right, um, and I think, Jan, you asked me this sort of as well, but best to kind of echo it. So, uh, John, FPL Dreamer asks, uh, do we trust Everton defence this week? Uh, I've already given my view, which is like, I'm going to maybe trust them to some extent. And uh, Capital FPL um, asked if uh, Everton and Wolves are worth looking at, or are we being blinded by double game week? And finally, Tim Winterfell, Asked if we see the appeal of players like Ruben Neves no. and Dwight, <laughs> Dwight McNeil on a free 
it or just the own in general i mean uh, everton and wolves are obviously the two teams who are make up that also runs the filler of this double game week and i think i'm gonna own i definitely own one everton players like to be tarkovsky might well own a wolves players like to be the goalkeeper <laughs> to be honest okay. I think that's, that's all i'm going with i think because I, I don't want to get kind of double game week blind. I know the FPL review, for example, is massive on Sarabia for some reason. Uh, drunk, stoned. I don't even know what the model is doing right now. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely one of those where like, uh, Wolves are kind of so-so. If they get 28, then fine. But um, we're not going to know that before this week. Um, Everton, Dyche has done Dyche things and ties them up considerably. A very small sample size again. If you go on the match logs at FB Ref, uh, you'll see that at home Dyche has kept the SGC to under one the last couple of games. Lampard never managed that this season. Um, average average about one point five, so it's a good sign. But that's basically like saying that this man's a better manager than Frank Lampard. So the bar is very very low. I mean, what do you guys think of both of these teams? I know that's quite a lot to ask. I mean, you can take one if you want. Um, I'm quite cold on Wolves. Um, they don't score any goals. Their their chance creation is terrible, and I I not really wild on them from a defensive perspective either. So I'd be completely dodging them unless you're on a free hit, in which case I might have one of their players. But I really don't like all of this enthusiasm for fairly mediocre players like Neves and McNeil that you'd never concede you never yeah. consider in a normal game week. I think if you're at a point where you're considering players that you are like would never look at don't do it like a double game week shouldn't be enough to do, to make you do that um i think from a defense point of view um everton a, a pretty sound investment given that they don't cost a lot tarkovsky's what 4.3 like you can sit him on the bench afterwards if you want to so i mean on a free hit definitely and on a free transfer then yeah fine i i don't really have a lot to add other than i just wouldn't get too carried away with them what do you think yeah uh, very similar boat. I think I'm maybe less. Um, I think Wolves one defender or a goalkeeper might have some merit. Just if Fulham are miss, missing Mitrovic again, um, they didn't really pose Bar- Brighton too much threat. I know they won the game, but they had literally like one chance, um, which was very very well yeah, taken. played for a nil nil and one one nil. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Solomon, that was a brilliant finish. Um, and I think there's no way they keep a clean sheet away at Liverpool, but maybe you get one. And then in terms of Everton. I look at it and I see an Arsenal side at the top of the league who are at home, who should score, like they should score. Yeah. And then I see an Aston Villa side under Emery who are improving, especially going forward. They still have defensive issues, uh, but going forward and Watkins looks really sharp. So I'm expecting no clean sheets. I'd still go one on the free hit. Yeah. You know, I don't t- think Tarkovsky is that bad a move, but I'm not expecting too much. I expect him to at least get maximum so would you, point. Would you go for like a Kilman over Tarkovsky? Um, if if you're not playing free hit in 28, then I think there's more merit. I think there's more merit to that. Yeah, but just because I think Everton have a difficult fixture in 28. Yeah, yeah, it is a difficult fixture. <laughs> it's the, the, the I think it's, it's just kind of almost. I know it's obviously we're, we're kind of fighting over very very small numbers at the moment, but the EO is uh, kind of maybe those people own Tarkovsky this week because he's just so reachable. Oh, they've got the easy fixture in 28. What are we talking about? Chelsea. <laughs> That's why I said oh, it's somewhat God. difficult. It's, it's still yeah. come on. You can still expect us to score a goal. <laughs> I like the Chelsea fans. Like, oh, come on. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, but I think you know, basically this all reinforces why free hitters. Like, these players strike me as a great rental opportunity yeah. than a purchase opportunity. You know, it's like going to you know, back in the day, going to a video shop and just getting a film that could be good, could be crap. Watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to take it, but you can take it back afterwards and forget about ever owning it, which is always fantastic. And um, you'll smash it this week. Well, we'll see, we'll see. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly, um, fairly optimistic. It just kind of depends what happens from here. Um, actually, next question is about that. So, uh, Gaurav, how many points is Tom looking to make using his free hit? Um, my answer is, who knows? I've got a no barometer because it's more fun that way. Um, I would like to outscore the two free transfer tree- team I could have gone for. Um, and I'm 10 points off the top 10K. So if I got into that comfortably after this week, that would be great. And that's all I care about. I just want to 
you know, if I get a fair wind of fortune with the players that I go with, then it could be great. But we shouldn't need to see. I mean, it could fall, fall flat on his face. I've got no idea. And finally, here before we move on to transfers and captains, it's a nice little segue. Uh, Joshua Biggs asked, are people using blank slash double game week 25 as an excuse to do big hits to redo their teams? He says he's seeing a lot of good teams with people saying they're taking minus eight, minus 12, et cetera, et cetera. It seems a bit odd. And I think that kind of nicely takes into transfers and captains after we kind of answer that because i think there's quite a few teams that i've seen out there and i think there's quite a few people you know but if, i'm sure you're all on group chats listeners on people saying here's my team i'm thinking of doing this see it on twitter blah 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 and there are quite a few teams that i'm kind of seeing people but i'm just thinking you you can get through this if you just got salary in or you can you know you get salary you get in robertson or trent you're fine you don't need to be buying a wolves player you don't need to be buying an everton player i think that's kind of a message that's coming out from us i mean um any words of advice on 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 this? Because it it definitely feels like it's easy to get carried away, but often actually it's to your detriment, isn't it, Lucy? Yes, I mean I think the, the one thing about this week is that you aren't that far away from playing other chips, where you can kind of hide a little bit of the the damage you might do. That's true. Um, <laughs> so there is that. Um, but I I am slightly concerned by the volume of people that seem to be taking Rashford out for someone that they will only want for one week. I agree. Yeah. I, it just strikes me as mad. Like, So it might pay off for one week, but then next week, like, you're scrambling, aren't you? And I just think it's mad. Um, I think most players in the game that you, you might consider selling, I can make a case for selling. So, for example, Trippier, we've just discussed. There, there is scope there where I can understand why you would sell him. For someone like Rashford, I just, I just don't get it. And I particularly don't get it when you're selling him for Iwobi, for example. It <laughs> just doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah. maybe I'm I'm being too close-minded about it. No. Jam, would you agree? Yeah, I totally agree with the Rashford point especially. Um, it's kind of difficult to get him back then once you do these type of moves. And you are really gambling. Like I think it's a real gamble to bet on the players from like Everton and Wolves in midfield who don't have a haul and you're expecting them to do it at Arsenal away or Liverpool away, which is tough. Um, and then in terms of the hit, um, now obviously my Twitter poll is not representative of 11.2 million people, but it had 75% of people taking a hit. So you're already starting 44 points up if you don't um, if you don't take a hit, which is a lot, like four points. You saw last week, four points is quite a bit. Um, and that's only people taking it. It's people taking minus eights, 12s, a couple 16s I've seen. So 16s? Yeah, I've seen a couple of 16s. And I think in a week where the doubles aren't so lucrative, apart from the Arsenal ones, which everyone's got, and then the Liverpool ones, which most people don't have triple, you can kind of get away with just not taking a hit. I, I'm actually high on not taking hits this year. Uh, I've had two, I've, I've taken two. It's, it's never, this never happens. But I think it's the message that Lucy has been trying to propagate to me for many years has finally penetrated my, pick, my fixed goal. And I've realized that it's great to be going into a week without the handicap of a minus four. Yeah. Because all the points are yours. Like it's taken me five years, six years to recognize that. <laughs> but now it's finally happened. Um, so yeah, I'm very looking forward to not doing that. And I think I'm I think you know, onward plan to 28. I think I take one hit or something like that. If I've got to take 28, uh, take a minus four and 28 or something like that. So I'll be in the opposite situation where if you're on free hit, I'll be on a, a minus four, but you know, yeah. hopefully the gains will be in the bank by then. Right. So, um, transfers and captains, uh, you're taking your hit, Jan. Uh, just reconfirm what you're doing. Uh, I'm using two frees, no hit. So, two frees to go from De Bruyne to Salah. And then the other one will be very likely will be Trippier to Robbo. Okay. Uh, how many uh, players we end up having? I will have 11 players and eight doublers. So it's, considering no hit, it's pretty good. But two of the doublers are Bueno and Patterson. So you still oh, so, so, uh, so a you little bit six, of six doublers yeah. then, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think Bueno will probably play like at least. I think he can play both games. Yeah, I think nine, you're looking at kind of ninety minutes, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll tell yeah, you that. exactly. Three point nine. That's value. That's value. So that's are you just... starting Patterson in that scenario? Yeah, that because basically my strategy from the World Cup was just dirt cheap defense. It was just Trippier, Shaw, Bueno, Patterson, and then someone else. Um, so yeah, I've just my defense will be white when I'm passing, which is as cheap as you get. Oh wow! But okay. Robert, Fair yeah. play. What about you, Lucy? Um, I'm still undecided. I'll definitely be doing KDB to Salah. 
And then there are a couple of moves I'm sort of toying with and haven't really worked out. Um, there's a possibility that I do Kane down to Darwin. And then there's the possibility that that pays for an upgrade to Trent. But I'm there is a, also a strong possibility that I just have one Liverpool and, and just iron out my defence a bit. I've, I've got Patterson starting at the moment and I'm clearly not going to get much out of him. Maybe one sub appearance. Yeah, one, one, one point. I mean, but that that's fine though, isn't it? If that's your yeah. 10th or 11th man, any any given yeah. week, you know, that's if, if, if that's fine. Um, I've, I've still got Patterson in my like proper team and he'll be kind of sat there until game week 28. And I'll be hoping for, a, a, you know, obviously he's going to score against Chelsea because Chelsea are rubbish, but I mean, a, a, <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping for one point like that week as well. Um, but hey, talking about go. Chelsea, um, just because Lucy touched on it, Kane, people selling Kane this week. We are rubbish at the moment. Like we yeah. are awful. It's, it's so um, Spurs, so Spurs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, they're grinding out results, and they are at home against us. So he could, Kane could probably get like a double digit haul. Yeah. I really wouldn't be surprised. So I'm surprised yeah. people are selling him. My my next, uh, my, my the only point that I've got here is that in my current free hit, no Kane is, is the main biggie. So he'll be the main rank threat. Um, but I yeah. think I've, I've got to go for it, and and yeah, that, that doesn't doesn't work. I think that's that kind of understandable. Um, we'll I've, do you I've, a favor. I've played around. I hope so. I've played I've played around with teams kind of with Kane in. It starts to get quite dicey. You know, you're looking at kind of going with Xhaka or something. Um, so it yeah, it doesn't quite work and as you might expect. So on, on my free hit at the moment, I'm it's, it's obviously in flux at the moment. Um, but seven of the eleven pit themselves. They are Trent, Tarko, Salah, Odegaard, Saka, Haaland, and Nketiah. Um elsewhere. So basically what I want is eight doubles and three city players. That's where I'm gonna go for it. Um I don't really know what City defenders is going to be or what City midfielder slash attacker it's going to be. It could be Foden or Gundogan. Um, I love Gundogan um, as a player um, and the way he's been playing, the play, the positions he's been taking up, it could well be him um, who does play that Bournemouth game. It depends on the Champions League, of course. Um, it could be Alvarez again, um, so I could go that way. I, I'm not sure yet. And the defender is whoever basically doesn't play in the Champions League that I think will play in the league. So it could be you know someone as exciting as a Kanji. Uh, people may be saying, oh, yeah, why didn't you get a Wolves player in there? The reason is because they're rubbish. Um, so that gives me eight doublers and three City players, which is it's probably okay, you know? Um, and the captain is what's interesting this week um, because it's, it's Salah or Saka, I think think if Nunez hadn't picked up his shoulder now yeah. he yeah, would yeah. be you know I would probably I'd be gunning for him and going yeah you know what I'm gonna go with Nunez full chaos let's hope for the best but now is I think it's that, those two. sorry is there anything Nunez can do in the Champions League that brings him back into the reckoning um fall on his shoulder have his shoulder punched um yeah, I, I think if, if he does look physically robust and plays 90 then maybe I'll think about it a little bit more but I, I don't like any laces. I, as I said to you earlier, Lucy, as a professional athlete myself, and done my shoulder recently, uh, recently as in a few years ago. Like you know, I know that those things are really hard to get over. I know Nunez from football. personal experience. Yeah, football, Nunez as football or whatever. I used to, I, I play computer games, but you know, it, it's 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 kind of the same thing. <laughs> Um, and I think it'd be quite it's quite difficult to get over that sort of injury. Um, and I, I think that you know. I mean, how will you lift your beer if your shoulder's out, right? That, that's the prob that's the issue that I had. And you know, Darwin's yeah. you know, playing football and stuff. I'm lifting beers. I mean, it's, it's difficult. Um, I, I think at the moment, I think I've, I've got to play it fairly safe with the captain as it is. So I think it is Saka or Salah. The only problem is, is that both of them have no penalties for Salah. Saka's goal is because he's being kicked to hell in every game yeah, he, he has played. Been. Um, and all England fans realise this uh, in in the in the tournaments, and the Arsenal fans are going, yes, yes, this is what we've been saying all along. Credit Adam Pritchard. Um, so if Saka's long goals and penalty, long shots and penalties. Uh, Salah, you know, you're, you're hoping to basically get lucky. So it's it's quite a difficult one um, to go with, really. Uh, maybe I'll go with Salah at the moment. I think it's where it's bust just because of the potential game. Because I think the ownership will be lower because people won't want to sell Kane to get there. It's, it's tough to get to because he's so expensive. And um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those where I could be swayed either way uh, during the course of this week. Uh, who are you guys captaining? I don't think we got on there, did we? I'm going for Salah, mainly because... Well, I'd go for him anyway, but I don't, I don't own Saka. 
Um, the whole reason I didn't get Saka in the first place was so that I could do these moves without taking a hit. Um, so I've got I've got Salah. I'll captain him regardless, just because he's got the highest ceiling of everyone. Um, he's always got like even if he's not playing that well, which he hasn't been, he's been getting better. He's always got a hat trick in him somewhere. So I'm right. I'm barely set on that. Okay. Question: yeah. Just because I've seen so many wild predictions, like a, a big range. What do you think his EO is going to be this week? I don't think it'll be that high, honestly. I think people people will bulk at selling Kane. But it'll be too much to do. We've seen those people just getting the, uh, as Lewis was saying earlier, people kind of going, oh, well, Gakpo will do. Um, and also people will see Kevin De Bruyne and will be like, oh, he's got Bournemouth. I'm not selling. So I think the EO will be quite decent. I think we'll get a nice little kind of a star next okay. to him. Yeah. Oh, oh, what do you think, Lucy? I'm leaning... 65 35 towards Salah at the moment. I'm not going to rule out Saka, but I I feel like as as Jan just said, I think the ceiling is is huge on Salah. Even even considering that they haven't been performing brilliantly, I just feel like eventually he's got to get a penalty, right? Come on, it could be this week. Um, he's so due. yeah, I he's due. He's due. He's due, due a penalty. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am currently leaning Salah, but I haven't ruled out Saka because I think Saka is going to be the big EO guy, isn't he, I think. Last time I captained Salah was game week four. Like, imagine. That's incredible. <laughs> the the, the, the 9 nil against Bournemouth where he did nothing. Like, it's just incredible really to think about how far they've dropped off. Nice way to end the pod, really, uh, with that moment. For you all to go away and think about how far Liverpool have dropped off. I think that's your lot. Uh, we're back next week for a, oh no, a mid-double game week pod again, Lucy. It's happening. Anyway, um, no, thanks so much for coming on, Jan. Uh, it was a great no, time. It was a pleasure. And yes, thanks, Lucy, for appearing back after last week's dodgy curry. Uh, th- th- thanks very much um, and thanks everyone for listening we were who got the assist you can find Tom on Twitter at WGTA underscore FPL and you can find me at Lucy Hynett if you enjoyed listening to this please like and subscribe to the podcast for new listeners out there if you think you'll be coming back please hit that five star rating across platforms like iTunes and Spotify so more people can enjoy the pod so yes that's it uh, we'll speak next week enjoy the rest of your week I think we'll be probably be back even earlier next week, next Monday, Lucy, uh, for your for your pleasure. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I hope it's just to you, and uh, we'll speak to you next Monday, mid game week. Take care. Cool. Cheers, guys.